Hey guys, my name is Drew Adams. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be discussing my strategy when it comes to building a portfolio from $1,000 to $100,000 and the types of investments that I believe need to be in and don't need to be in your portfolio. Let's get into it. When you think about the best stocks right now, you'll likely think about Apple, Microsoft and Facebook. These companies have had extremely good runs over the last decade and have made investors an enormous amount of money. Let's look at this chart of Apple over the last 20 years. If you had invested just $1,000 20 years ago in Apple, you would have over $338,000. But the crazy part about Apple now is that it's a victim of its own success. You likely wouldn't be able to recreate the same type of returns that we've experienced over the last 20 years investing your money into Apple now. One big thing that is currently happening in the stock market with huge companies like Apple and Microsoft and Google, they are all releasing absolutely amazing quarterly numbers right now. But their stock price isn't responding to their quarterly numbers. Apple released an absolute banger for quarterly numbers and the stock fell 2% that same day. Let's look at some of their numbers that they just barely released. Estimated earnings per share was $1.01 and they came in so strongly with $1.30. It demolished expectations by 30%. You look at their revenue, they were estimated to have $73 billion estimated revenue over this last quarter they had 81 billion dollars now think about this that is up 36 percent year over year absolute banger 10 out of 10 revenue from a company why on earth would their stock fall two percent after releasing numbers like this now when you see this you gotta ask yourself why is this happening Where's the money going? If people are pulling their money out of Apple when it's performing this well, where is it going? When huge companies like Apple are releasing numbers like this, but their stock price is falling 2% after showing these absolute banger quarterly numbers. Let's jump into this a little bit deeper. iPhone revenue was expected to come in at 34 billion and beat expectations by 49% coming in at 39 billion and their services rendered came in at 16 billion beating expectation by 33%. They came in with 17 billion dollars and the one part that I was a little worried about when it comes to Apple's revenue was their Mac and their iPad revenue since the government pumped out tons of money and everybody was working from home. They all went to Apple and they bought Macs and iPads and tools that they needed to work from home, right? And so I was worried that these numbers would be weak and it shows here that they are weaker compared to the rest of the other metrics but still they beat expectations by 16 and 12 percent in regards to mac and ipad revenue still these numbers are absolute amazing 10 out of 10 if any other company were to release numbers like this i would be a happy little clam but what happened to the stock the day they released these numbers fell two percent what happened in quarter two when they released their numbers then their stock fell as well so you might ask yourself how on earth are these companies releasing these amazing perfect numbers but after they release these numbers their stock falls imagine if they released subpar numbers or maybe just slightly above average numbers when it comes to their quarterly earnings what would have happened to apple stock my opinion here may ruffle a couple of feathers but you will not get rich buying apple stock at this point anymore and here is my reasoning behind that to get the same type of returns as we have over the last 20 years Apple would have to grow to a company size of $800 trillion. That number is absolutely obscene. The point I'm making here is that in order for Apple to have the same runway of growth that it's had over the last 20 years, it would have to be the size of the entire US economy. Frankly, I just don't see that happening unless they come out with a very wide range of new products. The current Apple product lineup is fairly saturated in our current economy. 
let's take a quick look at Microsoft. They released numbers the same day. They were expected to be at $1.92 per share as far as earnings, and it came out to be 217. These beat expectations. When it comes to revenue, they were expected to have 44 billion in revenue. They came out with 46. Microsoft Azure was up 51% in the quarter. They showed some amazing numbers as well. And how was Microsoft rewarded down in the stock market by a couple of percent? Microsoft has a market cap of $2.15 trillion. Let's take a look at Tesla. Their numbers were released as well within the last couple of days. And what happened with them? They released earnings. Tesla reported net income up tenfold year over year. This company could not have released better numbers. And how were they rewarded? Down 2%. Take a look at Tesla's market cap, $702 billion. This is a sign that these huge companies are really topping in the short term, at least. I think that a lot of institutional investors and retail investors are looking for other options to get better returns. So a lot of these big companies are starting to downtrend in the short term. And I believe that what people are doing is looking for other options to earn money and to have a potential of growth like Apple did, like Microsoft, like Tesla did over the last however many years these companies had their big runs. And so in the short term, these big companies are topping out right now. And before I get someone in the comments saying that I'm bashing on these companies for no reason, my point here is that if you're looking for a growth position in the stock market, these companies may not be the best fit for your portfolio right now. My goal with investing currently is to have maximum growth in companies that I understand and know and have done the research on. And so taking a look into these big companies, they just don't fit in my portfolio right now as they're not going to give me the type of returns that I would like to get. Considering my goal of turning my 100,000 that I have saved up in my portfolio to 200,000. And I strongly believe that these companies do not hold a position in my portfolio as I'm looking for certain growth type investments that will help me achieve that number much quicker than the consistent and solid return that these bigger companies are offering currently. I want a much bigger growth play. I believe that these companies are great for certain portfolios, but as for my goals and what I would like to achieve, I am not keeping them in my portfolio for that reason. Now, if you'd like to see more and, and see how I have my portfolio set up, please leave a comment below, hit the like button, do me a favor and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, check out this video here that I did about dividend investing. Thanks again and until next time.